awesome day here at Camp Cannon. Sulcata tortoises are starting to lay their eggs. This is my favorite part of living here. So today, I'm gonna to take you on a journey on how I get these animals to hatch. So we're gonna go from nest to hatch. As a pro bike rider, action sports announcer, and off-road adventurer, I'm always on the go. But for my true passion as a reptile breeder, I created my own sanctuary in South Florida. This is Camp Kenneth. I get so many questions about Kenan. How do I know when my tortoises are gonna lay? Well, let me show you what I've learned just from observing the animals here. First things first is the tortoises are gonna get restless. This is my sulcata tortoise, this is number four. She's been pacing the perimeter of her enclosure. Usually the animals are out and they're, if you could look, they're either wrestling with each other, they're sunbathing, they're grazing out in the back. That's normal tortoise behavior. When a tortoise is pacing the perimeter, especially if the animal has been here a while, if it, if it isn't a new tortoise looking to escape, it's basically looking for a place to lay her eggs. So number four has been pacing the last couple of days. And then you may even see little parts of the soil around here that have been scraped away. Those are test nests. It's very important for the mama tortoise to find just the right place to lay her eggs. She knows by smell, possibly by taste, and then the humidity of the soil, just if it's the right spot to put her precious cargo in the ground. Okay, so she's found her spot, she's turned around, and now with her back legs, she's dug out a flask-shaped chamber. And that's where the eggs are gonna go. Now, I've seen this happen in minutes, her deposit the eggs, and I've also seen it take all day. So we're gonna let her get comfortable, give us some privacy, and let her do her thing. The next step, though, is what to do once you've gotten the eggs. So while she's out there laying her eggs, it's important to get things ready for the eggs once they're laid. Because when you dig them up, you're gonna wanna have the vermiculite, your, your incubation substrate, all ready for the eggs to go. So what I've done is I've measured out a specific amount of vermiculite here, and an equal amount of water to add to the vermiculite for humidity. So it's basically a one-to-one -one ratio by weight. So now what I like to do is I get a concrete mixing tub from Home Depot, very inexpensive. I dump my vermiculite in there, then I dump my water in here, and I'm gonna mix it up. It's very easy, just like playing in the mud. Just mix it all up, try and get a, a nice homogeneous mixture there of water to vermiculite. Very simple, just keep doing it like this. And you know, you can also go by feel. Some eggs like it a little bit more moist, others, like these tortoise eggs, don't really need it too, too humid, probably about 60% to 75% humidity is gonna be just right for those guys. So you can see right here, everything's nice and ready. So I scoop it all up like this. It's kind of fun, you get to play in the dirt again as an adult. So you put it all in, smooth it all out, and it's ready for the eggs. Get the lid, We've got a little hole so they can breathe. Some guys don't like to use the holes. You can just put a little bit of scotch tape on them and that's fine. Some people like to just what they call burp the container for the gas exchange. I put a little bit of holes in there. I like airflow. I don't like to get any moldy eggs or anything like that. So I just do this. And uh, another reason I'm excited to show you the incubation method is I have two incubators here that I wanna talk about. Now, to be honest, this is an old refrigerator. Founded at a yard sale, they were actually giving it away. I pulled out the motor in the Freon and I converted it into an incubator. Real low tech, but it works. The problem is the fan inside this bad boy, it's not powerful enough to circulate the warm air evenly, but it does get the job done as I'm about to show you. Really excited. This is the best part of any tortoise breeder's life. Okay, we have some leopard tortoise eggs right here. I was collected on the 2nd of July. And since I didn't have eggs to show you earlier about how to place them in, you can see I just gently place the eggs in here. I got a little paper towel that I've dampened. And if this gets too crispy, I know I have to add water to the substrate. But let me get to the real good stuff, folks. Here we go. These are some sulcatas that are starting to hatch. Look at this. I don't care if it's a red eared slider turtle, a ball python, or a baby tortoise. Look at that. 
so you can see the little guy is popping out right now. It's so exciting. I love it. And you can see if you focus in right there, you can see his little caruncle or egg tooth. That's what helps these guys actually as they grow inside the egg. The egg is a nice self-contained universe for this little embryo to develop. So as they're inside there, they start to grow and feed off that yolk. And as he gets big enough and formed enough, he's now growing too big for his little universe. So he starts to push his nose, break out, and then he starts to finally breathe air. And over the next few weeks, sometimes it takes a few weeks for these guys to actually pop out. He might push out a little <laughs> tiny tortoise foot, a tiny tortoise leg, and then eventually he's completely out, like his little clutch mate right here. Look at that. Huh? Is that amazing? Incredible to see something so small that can grow to be 150 pounds if taken care of properly. Here's his yolk sac. He's still got a little bit left, so I'm gonna leave them in the incubator for a little bit longer. Now, the whole reason I pulled these guys out, I got a little sidetracked. I wanna show you my new professional incubator here from Hotbox Incubators. These guys make an incredible product. I've been wanting one of these for about a year. It's made of expandable PVC board, and that has little tiny air pockets in it that act as insulation. It's also got the thermostat, temperature gauge, keeping the nice, consistent temperature, which is so important for the developing eggs. So what I want to do is show you a little bit about the features inside of this. Check out that really trick fan right here. I was having problems with my old incubator because the fan wasn't powerful enough to really distribute all the warm air. So if you go down to the bottom, follow me down. Down here, I've got my water pan for humidity, but there's also a false wall between the inside of the, the incubator and the outside of the incubator. So what happens is there's a gap down at the bottom. It's sucking the air up. The air is going through the heat tape, the heating element back here, and then being blown out the top. So what's happening? I'm getting a nice uniform temperature all the way from top to bottom, maybe about a one degree difference in temperature. So we're gonna take our leopard tortoise eggs right here, and we're gonna put them on in the new incubator because I know that this has been running for 24 hours at a nice consistent temperature, the temperature I want. We're gonna take our little guys that have just hatched, we're gonna let them do their thing. And then finally, we're gonna get the container that I prepared for the sulcata eggs being buried as we speak. So I'm gonna let this get nice and warm. So when I put the, the new eggs into this, no drama, these guys are gonna develop. And in 90 days, that's when you get sulcata babies hatching out. Let's be quiet because children need to sleep. All right. All right, so after you get some hatchlings out, I like to put them in a hatchling nursery. And you can see here, I have a completely enclosed cage that these animals can be raised up in and I have a few different species of hatchlings that are actually living here together. Now, sulcatas take a little while to incubate and hatch so I don't have any available now but I will show you a little baby yellowfoot tortoise that I hatched out just over a week ago. Now, when I get the hatchlings, I let them sit in the incubator for a while. Just let them gather their strength and let them absorb their yolk. Once the yolk is about like this size, almost completely absorbed. I go ahead and I take the animal and I place it in the tortoise nursery here. So this time of year, it's a very slow time of year for hatchlings, but there's always something cooking here at Camp Kennan. And the good thing about raising them outdoors as hatchlings is because they'll get that natural sunlight, which is so important to developing their shells and bones. And they also start to explore more and they are less stressed, in my opinion, if they're outdoors. So that's how I do it. I also have a four month old elongated tortoise. So there you have it folks. That's what I do when I find eggs in my backyard. You go from the nest to the incubator to the nursery. And then hopefully we raise up nice healthy captive raised tortoises, very important. Well, there you have it. If you have any other questions, maybe something in the minutia that I didn't cover for you, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. Let's close it out with a couple little guys that recently just hatched here at Camp Kennan. These are some baby Indian star tortoises. These guys are fantastic. Here they're just nibbling on a little bit of hibiscus leaf and I like to get these guys outdoors to make sure they have enough natural sunlight. I just brought them out for a little stretch. Usually they're in a completely enclosed cage so they don't get eaten by any predators. 
This is a little baby Herman's tortoise that I recently found. It actually hatched in the ground. I didn't even have to dig it up. The cool thing was is I was just strolling around, looked down, and there he was eating a hibiscus leaf. So, there you have it folks. A couple of new babies. We're having a great time out here, and I'll see you next time on Camp Kennedy.